Trading. Simon Michelle joining us from Big Security. Simon, great to see you there. Obviously, bond markets very much reacting to that better than expected employment data out of the US and what that will mean for interest rates, of course. But an interesting dynamic that we're seeing at the moment. I mean, equities moving up, bonds moving up at the same time. It's not really what we, we expect to see, is it? Absolutely right. Good afternoon, Leanne. It's usually either or. Generally, when investors are looking to take on some risk, you see very good solid performance out of equity markets. Then they're feeling a little bit uh, under a bit of volatility. They're looking for a bit of safety. We see bond markets performing well. But what we have at the moment, uh, as you say, is the US 10-year Treasury hitting an all-time record low. And at the same time, the equity market about to hit an all-time record too. So we don't really see this. I don't think we've ever seen this before. So it's uh, certainly causing some uh, concern out there for investors. I think it uh, definitely suggests that there is an ongoing view that rates will move lower. We saw that uh, rates did start to move up a little bit on the back of that better job support out of the US. But once there was a little bit more value there, uh, we saw investors pile in and, and push those yields further down. So, you know, I think while we're in an environment of lower inflation, lower growth, uh, in the Australian market, our 10-year rate, 10 basis points above the cash rate, uh, you know, and that uh, continued demand for bonds is likely to keep these yields down low. But j just on the US Fed, and you mentioned there uh, sort of a, a shift in the pricing of a, a rate increase and so forth. What's, what's your view? Do you think we could get, get a rate hike this year, particularly after that solid job support? Look, I, 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 I don't know that they can, um, Leanne, and I really think it's global factors here. I mean, bear in mind, as of course, we also expect to see the Bank of England later mm. this uh, week lower rates uh, in the UK down to, you know, maybe just slightly above zero. So, you know, we've got Japan now, new government looking to uh, some further quantitative easing measures. <laughs> got the Euro Europe zone still in uh, easing, uh, concerns out of China. Uh, the RBA here, uh, you know, we, we expect to send, see them cut rates possibly in August after the July CPI print later this month. So, you know, they're really, uh, you know, the, 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 the direction is down and uh, I think it makes it very tough for the US to go it alone and move rates up in this environment. If you have a look at uh, what the market's saying, they see rates lower for longer, certainly mm. not building in an increase this year. Uh, yeah, Simon, I'm um, obviously seeing this flight to safety, but despite that, I mean, we're seeing credit margins tightening. Well, this is the thing. So normally, again, uh, you know, this is this divergence of, uh, of, uh, of money here, but what you're seeing is uh, investors happy to take on the more risky issuers, um, take on better yield from moving down the credit spectrum. Um, so right across uh, credit markets, we're seeing good, strong demand. So that's, that's positive, and it certainly suggests that this is really a search for yield rather than uh, a significant flight to safety. All right, fantastic. Simon, we're going to leave it there. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a good day. Simon and Michelle.